today I want to share with you um, a very important message. Make sure you share and subscribe. And we just have a few minutes. Um, but I believe that it's a very important message on victory attitudes for fruitfulness. Victory attitudes for fruitfulness. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Amen. I believe that the will of God for us all is fruitfulness. And so, in the beginning, God said to uh, Adam and Eve that they should be fruitful and multiply. So, God wants you to be fruitful. And God wants you to multiply. And actually, in a study that was done to see what people desire most from their jobs, right? Was it money or what made them happiest? What made people happiest from their jobs? Was it money, position, other benefits? And it was the satisfaction of the job that it was found, not the money, but the satisfaction and the sense of fruitfulness and usefulness. All right. That was more uh, important to people that work all over the world. All over the world. So, but people think that, oh, money will make you happy. You know? But you may have all the money, but not know what to do. So, Jesus said, in order to bear, for him to bear fruit, which means for us to bear fruit, the seed must fall into the ground and die. And that is a process of going through falling, going into darkness, going into difficulty, uh, pressure, uh, no oxygen, no light, dirtiness, mm. horribleness, no one sees you, Vanishing from view. You vanish from view. You go out of view. You become nothing. But when you drop into the ground, you are just dead. Um, heat. Being under pressure and being hot. Because that's one of the things about being in a grave. Even if you are alive. And they bury you alive and you, you can even breathe. The heat that is in the ground is not a small thing. So, many people are offended when they have to go into the ground. You know, and that's, that's, that's also a reality. Sometimes even being transferred from one place to another. Or even being rebuked. Or being told off. Or being told something that's not so nice. Or being uh, put in place. Or having a bad experience in this world is sometimes uh, what is like the dying process. You go into the ground and perish. All right. But the, the good news is that you're going to come out again bearing fruit. And there are certain fruits you cannot bear and there's fruit you cannot bear until you go into the ground you have to be buried and the chinese bamboo takes between four and five years to even show a sign on the earth that it is about to grow but when it starts to grow then it grows within a few weeks it's very tall you can actually see it moving so god is going to bless you if you can survive now, Jesus said something else. 
He said, woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offenses come. So Jesus is saying that there's going to be things that offend and hurt. You know, and honestly, if you, if you see somebody who's not been hurt before, you know the person is a little immature. Sometimes you look at people who are very excited. Oh, we are going to get married. We've got a beloved. We've got this. We've got that. And it's like you, you just, you just, you just praying for the person that I just hope you'll be smiling in some weeks to come. Just weeks. Weeks. Months. You'll still be happy. And you'll still be smiling. Amen. So, but because the Bible says that woe to the world, like the big issue in the world is the offenses, the offenses that are in the world, woe to the world, the things that hurt, the things that are painful, and your response and your reaction to all the things that hurt, all right? If I am to describe or to say the things that have hurt me in my life, you'll be surprised. Because you would think that, oh, everything goes well for me. Everything is beautiful, wonderful, this and that, and so on. But there's nobody like that. There's nobody who doesn't have a problem. In fact, I've not seen anybody without a problem before in my life. You know, it's like, I just ask, what's your problem? <laughs> Everybody has one. Yes. So God wants you to have a very important attitude. Because the Bible says, number one, all right, give no place to the devil in your attitudes or in your, yeah, in your flow. Give no place to the devil. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 4 verse 27 says, give no place to the devil. That means give no place to hatred. Give no place to unforgiveness. Give no place to wickedness. Give no place to revenge. Give no place to a bad attitude that has developed in you because of what you have experienced. Give no place because that's what changes you. I mean, the difference in people is the difference in the attitude. The difference in the flow. Yeah. So that's why in church, we ask, is he a flowing, is he a flowing brother? Is he a flowing sister? That's, that's all we are looking for. Is he a flowing brother or flowing sister? Or somebody who, through the offenses in this world, has changed and is no more a flowing person. Some satanic residues are working. All right? So give no thought to discontentment. Give no place to discontentment. Give no place to anger. Give no place to all this revenge and all that. That is the first thing in your victory attitudes to fruitfulness. Because as you are a seed falling into the ground, I need you to keep smiling in the ground. Oh, yes. As you go through. Yes. When you are down there, keep smiling. Amen. And the good flow. You see, that's why we call it flow church. Uh, okay. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. Flowing. The good flow is going to give many good fruits. Amen. Amen. Because your heart, the Bible says, out of the heart are the issues of life. Amen. And so from today, receive grace to have a good and a flowing heart and a flowing be a flowing person you know smiling you know full of joy all right more relaxed more trusting do you see it's your it's your attitude and all the other things you know if you take schizophrenia a person with schizophrenia becomes quiet it becomes quiet the, the mood changes. The person will be there, doesn't talk. A, a tone, it doesn't move. Can you imagine? They stay in one place without moving. And then not talking. What is wrong? Then his her attitude and his, how, how his, his social life, dressing, everything deteriorates. And it becomes quiet to himself and moody and detached. This is mental illness. 
until it gets as far as taking off all the clothes and walking around in town. So what I'm telling you about maintaining a good and relaxed attitude towards life and be, be flowing, just like they say, flow check, be flowing. We flow at any time of the day. It's live every for 24 hours. Oh, yes. Now, I want to read to you this good attitude, all right, and getting rid of these evil attitudes will actually affect how long you live. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In Proverbs 14 and verse 30, the Bible says, a relaxed attitude lengthens a man's life. Oh, yes. A relaxed attitude lengthens a man's life. And jealousy rots it away. Yes. Today's Living Bible. A relaxed attitude lengthens a man's life. Oh, yes. Yes. A relaxed attitude. No, no, not the King James. I'm talking about the TLB. Oh, yes. A relaxed attitude. So, you see, you need to calm down. All right? You need to calm down. And I'm preaching to myself, too. I need to calm down. And I need to relax. And uh, you need to just calm up all the things that have agitated you, made you angry, discontented, destroyed, full of wickedness, full of unforgiveness, revenge, bitterness. It's not it's going to shorten your life. You know? And this verse is saying that a relaxed attitude lengthens a man's life. Oh yes. The amplified one says, a calm and undisturbed mind and heart are the life and health of the body. A calm and undisturbed mind and attitude heart are the life and health of the body. But envy Jealousy and wrath are like rottenness of the bones. Wow. So your jealousy, what, what is this person doing? This one is prospering. This one's going ahead of me. This one's child has gone to a Montessori school. But my, my child has not been able to go to a Montessori school. <laughs> this one's child is going abroad. And my child is local. Oh, relax. He says, a relaxed attitude lengthens a man's life. Oh, yes. This verse you are, is going to stay with you. And jealousy rots it away. So, jealousy rots your life away. Oh, yes. A brother met a sister who was 100 years old. She was 100 years old. And he asked her that, how are you able to be how have you been able to be hundred? He said, oh, me, I don't keep things. So when did they happen? He said, she said she used the word life happens. He said, life has happened to me. Wow. But I don't let it stay in me. And, and just allowing that relaxed flow. So that's when you look at certain elderly people, you see that they are no more relaxed. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So God wants you to remain young and strong. Point number three. God wants you to remain young and strong, so he's going to give you some good spiritual things, all right, which help you to relax and become more youthful. God is going to give you some things that are going. And what are the things he's going to give you? Love, joy. He says in Psalm 103, the one who fills your life with blessings so that you can become young again. This is from the God's Word version. <laughs> the God's Word version. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The one who fills your life with blessings so that you can become what? Young again. Receive the grace to become young again. Young again. I, I told you that this was a very important message today. How God is going to make you young again. And the Bible says he gives you, he fills, he fills you, Psalm 103. He fills your life with blessings. Mm. Blessings. And blessings of love, joy, peace, good things. Do you see? Spiritual things. 
so that you can relax and become young again. Another version, the Good News Bible, it says, He fills my life with good things so that I stay young and strong. You're going to stay young and strong by moving on. Amen. Amen. And by receiving the good things that the Lord gives you. This is the Psalm 103 we know in the King James. Who satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. That's what you know. But you see, when you read another version, it helps you to understand it better. He fills your life with blessings so that you become young again. I see somebody becoming young again. And it must be a good thing to be young. For God to bless you so that you become young again. So those of you who like, uh, I don't know what word, in pain, same type of dressing, you look very grown up, mature, I mean very old, dignified, you can't even move your neck as if you have cervical spondylosis. You just move like this, you just move, I mean, you are not flexible. Is it, the Bible is rather trying to bless you uh, to become what? Young again. And you are pushing yourself to be more mature and uh, more advanced in years. I, I don't understand it. Amen. Number four. God has forgiven you for your mistakes. Amen. And you see, your own mistakes, you also have to overcome the effect that your own mistakes have on your own life. It says, for as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Psalm 103 and verse 12. As far as the east is from the west. What mistake have you made? What error? What fall? What, what have you dipped yourself into? It says, as far as the east is from the west. It's, it's God, God, God's, God's forgiveness is, is quite wild. You know, honestly, as I keep on studying about forgiveness, I don't think human, human beings can easily forgive. I feel that it's something almost spiritual. I mean, because some things are unforgivable. Oh, yes. Some things are unforgivable. When I say unforgivable, I mean, what I mean is like, it's, it's unthinkable that you would do something like that. Yes, it's unthinkable. But that's what you've done. I didn't do it once. Hmm? Oh, yes. But you see, God is saying that this is how he forgives. As far as the east is from the west. But that's a long distance. It's infinity. East doesn't meet west. And that's how God forgives. And so, Today we are receiving the grace to forgive. May you have the grace to forgive. Also to forgive yourself. Because uh, without that, you are not going to have the relaxed attitude that lengthens life. Hmm. Are you there or you are leaving? Oh, yes. Amen. So God wants to forgive you. And God wants you to forgive yourself. And move on. Amen. Amen. Blessed. Why? Why are these victory attitudes uh, important? Because the Bible says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. If your heart is not pure of wickedness and of bad attitudes, you don't see God. So you notice that God moves more where there are young people. And where there are younger people who have not yet been contaminated with the heads of this life. Yes. And that's why we have to become young again. Oh, yes. I wish everybody would become young again as the blessing of Psalm 103. Oh, yes. And, have, and you see that the younger, the younger people in younger churches, they are more pure, not because they are better than the grown-ups, but because yet they have not experienced what is in this world. Yes. Because as life hasn't happened yet. Because life happens. But if life happens and you are able to let the things go, to let the things go, 
then God is going to bless you. And I believe that that is why when Jesus was on the cross, you know, the last thing before he died, he said, forgive them. You know, because he could have just died, just closed his eyes. Lord, I pray for my disciples. I pray for those who are falling away. I thank you for their lives. I pray that you be with them as I depart from this world. Lord, I commit your vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I pray that, Lord, you whatever. But he wanted to get it out of his soul. What they were doing to him, he wanted to get it out of his heart so that he could just go out of this world pure in heart because he wanted to see God. He wanted to see God. Blessed are the pure in heart. You'll be seeing God because of your new and flowing attitude in the Lord. Amen. Oh, what a blessing. Amen. God is forgiving and God is helping you to move on. Forgive yourself and forgive everyone and all the wickedness as though you've never been hurt before. And how do you do that? By focusing on the future. Amen. Amen. Philippians chapter 3. Are you there? Oh, yes. Philippians chapter 3. I want you to see the attitude of Apostle Paul. You know that verse from the King James. This one thing I do. Forgetting all those that are things that are behind and pressing on. But in another version, it says, No, dear brothers, I'm still not all that I should be. <laughs> but I am bringing all my energies to bear on this one thing. I'm focusing all my energies on one thing. Forgetting what is behind and pressing forward to what lies ahead. So, for Paul to say, I focus all my energies on what is ahead. Instead of focusing all your energies on what has already happened. It cannot make you to do well. And so, God is telling you, look, whatever you have been through, you may have had a bad a very bad experience. I mean, sometimes you lie in your bed and you wonder, that is your life a movie? You know, like what is happening to you? Something you read about in a book. What is going on? And what have you have such negative steps? And then sometimes you look and you feel that you have had a series of bad steps, but no good step at all. And God is saying to you today, listen, just like Paul, Paul who has had so many bad experiences, and as I, he said, I focus all my energies on forgetting and on pressing on towards the future. You know, if you don't focus your energies, maybe your ministry hasn't worked up to now. And maybe things have not been right, or maybe you have not related well. Or maybe you have been bitter, and maybe you've taken wrong decisions. But you have to focus your energies. Take all your strength for the future and press on. Because you are not, some of the things that have happened, you can't change them. You can't change it. Life has happened. Life has happened already. And you're going to have to focus all, all your energy, all your strength for what is ahead. Oh, yes. And what is ahead? You know, one brother, his wife died. And uh, he was going to marry another lady. Or either he married or was going to marry. And I, talked to, I spoke to him. And I asked him, how do you feel? He said, oh, I, son, I don't feel happy. He said, oh, I, I think of my first wife. And uh, I feel guilty. I feel guilty to be happy. I feel guilty to flow. I feel guilty. You know? And you realize that when you have experienced something like this, unless you focus all your energies on what lies ahead, you, you, you cannot do well. And I know today God is helping you yes. to focus all your energies. Yes. Amen. Amen. By moving on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Forgive others and forgive people. Amen. Amen. Forgive by dropping issues. Oh, 
There are so many issues we can hold on to. What do you mean by dropping? Mark chapter 11 and verse 25. If you read it, everybody knows it from the King James Version. But I'm going to give you it from another version. Mark eleven twenty-five. What does it say? When you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive. Drop the issue. In the name of Jesus, drop and move on. Be Paul. Be Paul. And focus your energy on what lies ahead. But what does the other version say? Another version says, in the Amplified, it says, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, drop the issue. Drop the issue. Oh, yes. Drop the issue. Let it go. Wow. Wow. So let your spirit go up. Every change in every human being comes from what they've experienced. In every country we go, the history of the country affects the attitudes of the people. You see that the people are a certain way because of what they've experienced. If you go to America, you see black people have a certain Attitude. attitude because of what they've experienced. And the Bible is saying, Drop it. Let it go. Playing around with it is not going to help you. Amen. Amen. It will change you. And you'll be surprised what will become of you. Uh, Many years ago, there was a president in America. And... uh, this president was shot. He's one of the presidents who was shot. You know, we have a number of American presidents who've been shot. Now, when, the, when he was shot, right, the bullet went straight into him. He was shot from the back. So the, the bullet went to the pancreas, to behind the pancreas in the body. Now, in those days... They didn't know that when you are shot, when the bullet goes in, you just leave it. You see, so what it is is that people leave, you, you leave the bullet there. Because it, when it is going in, it is hot and it is sterile. It's fire. So it's a sterile for anybody unless it's causing a particular problem. Just leave it. Do you see? But... At that time, they didn't know. And um, they started to poke, you know. Oh, dear. Yes. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. You see, there, there are issues that should be left and that shouldn't be poked. Mm. Oh, yes. That shouldn't be poked. Mm. So, instead of leaving the bullet, because he didn't die, they wanted to get the bullet. Do you see? So they kept poking the issue and pressing it. Even at that time, this man was alive, the, uh, Abraham Bell, the one who invented the phone, telephone. And he even invented something to try to locate the bullet to help to find it for the president. But they never got it. And after about 80 days, of poking, he died, but not from the bullet, oh. but from the infections and the other surgeries oh. and so on that they had had. So sometimes you see that something has happened. Leave it. The Bible says in Mark 11, 25, I said, drop it. Drop this thing, drop it, and be like Paul and focus your energies on what lies ahead in the name of Jesus. If I was to remember certain things, I cannot even have appoint a appointed pastor. I will not even consecrate anybody as a bishop. I will not appoint anybody as a pastor. I remember I said, you, you, you don't even have a ministry. I'm encouraging you. I'm helping you. But if I, if I focus on that, I will, lose, I will even lose my, my ministry. And, and if I keep on poking, that's why I don't think about so many things. Because as you keep poking, 
poking, always thinking. You are lying in bed thinking, thinking this, 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 going to want to find this, pressing, pressing, pressing before I realize it's the thing itself is not going to kill you, but you're poking and not leaving the issue is now destroying you and you are finished. A relaxed attitude lengthens life. Drop the issue and drop the tragedy and press on. That's the only way. This life, life happens. There are things that are here. Ah, I remember my father-in-law said, before he died, he said that there is nothing that he hasn't seen one of it before in this, in this world. <laughs> There's nothing that he hasn't seen one before. So many things. Oh, yes. By a certain age, you'll be shocked the things that you see. And so it's going to be more your ability to recover rather than going backward to poke things and uh, before you realize that is what is killing you. You will not die in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Drop the issue. I said drop the issue. And God is going to bless you. Now, before I close, there is somebody in the Bible that many of us know. You know Absalom, isn't it? And you also know Ahithophel. Ahithophel. Now, Ahithophel was one of David's most trusted uh, advisors. And there's always been a question as to when the problem came with Absalom. Why did Ahithophel suddenly switch? Like, why was it so easy for him, do you see, to switch sides? You know, and this is something very important for people who want to be faithful. I'm talking about fruitfulness. I'm talking about, you know, maintaining a good attitude so that you can eventually bear fruit. Ahithophel's ministry could have continued. He would have died in glory. But he died. He died. He hanged himself. And he died from suicide. And he died in disgrace. And he died and is always remembered as an unfaithful person for whom the scripture that says that he that has eaten bread with me has lifted up his high heels. He, he took his heels. He took his heels. He took his heels to, to knock my head. Oh. And I don't know if he was wearing high heels. <laughs> No, that's serious. A person that you are eating with, they take the heels and start to attack you as you are eating. No, that's, that's, that's serious. So the question is, why? Let me read some scriptures that may help you to see why. Just quickly, as we close. Second Samuel 11 verse 3. And David sent and inquired after the woman, Bathsheba. And one said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of who? Eliam. The daughter of Eliam. He was the daughter of Eliam. Then in 2 Samuel chapter 23 and verse 8, the Bible says, These be the names of the mighty men. Do you see? The mighty men that David had. Verse 34, the Takmonai that sat in the sea, chief among the captains, the same was Adino. That was verse 8. He lifted up his spear against 800, whom he slew at one time. And verse 34, Eliphet, Eliphelet, the son of Ashbai, the son of the Markathite, yes. and Eliam, Eliam, remember? Eliam, Eliam, the son of Ahithophel. The son of Ahithophel. So Ahithophel's son was Eliam. And Eliam's daughter was Bathsheba. Do you understand? Yes. So then in 2 Samuel chapter 15 verse 12. And the Bible says, And Absalom sent for Ahithophel the Gilonite. Remember? Ahithophel the Gilonite, who is the mighty man in 2 Samuel chapter 23 and verse 34. Eliam, the son of Ahithophel the Gilonite. The same, the same Ahithophel. Wow. So Ahithophel's son was Eliam 
And Eliam's daughter was Bathsheba. And David had killed Bathsheba's husband and Uriah and taken the Bathsheba his, as his wife. Wow. And Ahitophel was watching all these things. Do you see? And I am sure that he was terribly he was just in the system. Maybe smiling and everything, but there was something. You see, there are a lot of that's why the day the chance comes, then they just go that way. And it's realize that, oh, all this has been in you all this time. So that you look at people as a you've been flowing, but not knowing that there was something boiling in the person, a residue. Residue. What David did was not right. And you will by all means experience people doing something to you not right. As I'm standing here, there are people that have done things to me that are not right. Even as I'm here now, practically. Do you see? Yes. And but does it mean it, it, it shouldn't change you. And before you realize, Ahitophel, lo- he lost his whole ministry out of that. That's what I'm saying that when the bullet goes into you, it's just leave the bullet to just be there. And you're going to take it out. It's now going to be something else. So Ahitophel was nursing in him underground a whole lot of things. And finally, one day when there was a rebellion, said, aha! This man I knew all along, I tell you, whenever I experience orangos and whatever, you see them react, I'm just watching to see all those who are going to come. They don't know that they are exposing themselves. They don't know that they are exposed. Hidden attitudes that destroy people. It's like this is a chance for the attitude to come out. So I want to encourage you today, you know, be careful because we are all changing. We are changing by our experiences. We are changing by our experiences and our attitudes are changing. And God is saying to you today that a relaxed attitude, do you see, lengthens life. (laughs) Exchange your bitterness for joy. Hallelujah. He says, I will appoint them in Zion to give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Exchange all these negative things. For a good spirit and be, be, become known as a flowing person, a person who's so start to flow. I want to speak to people that are even older. Yeah, you know, try to watch yourself, or you may not know how changed you are. How changed you are. You know, one day a mother told her, her daughter in, in Ghana in a language, says, No, me, I was I, I was sweet like you. How, how you are a sweet girl now, you are 18. I was also sweet. I was also sweet. Before your father came for me. Oh, yes. And life happened to me. I was sweet. I was sweeter than you. In fact, I was even nicer than you. Because some mothers know that they are nicer than their daughters. But God is blessing you. And he says, I will satisfy you with good things so that I am strong and young again. May God purge your, 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 your soul and your spirit of every wickedness and every evil that has taken place in your life. And may he bring you to the place where you can now emerge from the ground to bear fruits. For except the seed, except the seed Except it happens. Except you go through what you must go through and come out smiling and joyful, you will abide alone. You will abide alone. You will abide alone. Father, I thank you for all those that are part of this amazing service. Thank you for victory, attitudes, for fruitfulness. Thank you for taking us and bringing us to the place Lord, where we can flow on. And Lord, even those who are hurt by God, because some of us are offended with God. Some of us are hurt by God. Why, why, Why have you done this? Why have you allowed this? And some of us are offended with ourselves. Why have I failed so badly? But God is saying to you today, focus all your energies. That's what that version says. I focus all my energies on what is ahead. May all your energies from today 
We focus on what is ahead as the Lord himself blesses you. Father, thank you for blessing and touching and healing every life. Thank you for a new face. Ah, becoming young again. Becoming young again. Becoming youthful again. Sweet again. Nice again. According to your word. Thank you for the blessedness of fruitfulness. Thank you that no one will be lost. Whom Satan has decided to take out through heads. The heads in this world and in this life. We give you thanks and praise in the name of Jesus. And as every head is bowed, if you are, maybe you are watching and want to give your life to Jesus, I want to pray with you. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Have mercy on me. I want to give my life to you today. Have mercy on me. Make me a new person. From today, I am a follower of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you for being, being a part. I see many people are part of us today. And I want to um, encourage you, listen to the message again. Because this message, if, if you are part of this life, you will definitely come to a place where you see that I need to know how to have a relaxed attitude that might lengthen my life and flow in the spirit. Yes, in Jesus' name. If you gave your life to Christ, it's a message on the screen, and I know that God is going to bless you. I want us to take out our final offering, flow offering today. Amen. Amen. Take out your um, offering and let's... I want us to give... You see, when you are not flowing, you don't give offerings. Say, oh, I've done this before. <laughs> They said I should give 100. I gave 100 and nothing happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's a residue. It's a residue. And you realize that you've been affected. You've been affected. Yeah. We can easily be affected in the world. And you see that you are no more a happy person. I want everyone to say, say thank you to the Lord. Say thank you, thank you, thank you. Mike Medoc was with uh, Bishop Oyedepo. I was reading the other day, and he said that I think they were coming from the house to where they were going to preach or something. And then Mike Meadow turned to Bishop Pudipo and said that you have said thank you, either thank you, Jesus, or hallelujah, about 70 times since we left the house <laughs> to here. That's, that's, that's a sign of the Holy Spirit. It's a sign of the Holy Spirit. I see. Oh, yes. A sign of the grace of God. Yeah. Grace, thank you, is grace. Everybody take your offering and let us pray over it. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, whatever offering, I don't care where you are watching from and at what time of the day you are watching this, but you must give at every time of the day. After 24 hours of this uh, service, we will then know that the service is over and then we will be able to see that, yes, you were part and you gave offerings as the Lord himself bless you. Father, bless every giver, everyone who says thank you. We love you. And we praise you and we give you thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. And um, I'm going to uh, re receive the offering as we, I want us to sing this song. You know, from, from 25 to 50 is the time of happiness. And you can see again, it's like, why does God want to make you young again? Because he wants to make you fruitful again oh yes as you give your offering be blessed with this song and god bless you may you have a wonderful sunday or monday or whatever whatever time come amen